and that really just like touched me like touched me a lot because I think you know it's like really yolo you know we only live once oh yeah yeah so yeah. you really have to go for you know what you like what you want what you want to do and I think I just I uh, I really want to be um, the reason why I want to be a director is that I I can express myself you know send the message through like a media that's like um, you know lots of people can see and probably if lucky for generations Hey everyone, Raina Torres here, and I'm super excited that we have arrived at season two of the Women Creating Magic podcast. I run my own creative studio, and I wanted to create a platform for amazing women to have real conversations about our experience in the entertainment industry, and just talk about that moment that we decided to take control of our lives as women. A safe and open space to sit down comfortably with a cup of tea or a glass of wine to relax and have an open conversation about their experiences as women in the entertainment industry. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe, comment, and leave a review because all of that will really help us out and keep us going. Today I sat down with Kian Chang. I met her on a set doing 48 hour short film and was amazed at how talented and ambitious she is. Don't let her size fool you. She's a strong woman and outspoken about what she loves in life. Please welcome Kian Cheng. So how did you end up starting doing what you're doing now? Explain, tell people what you do. Mm. Uh, I'm an aspiring filmmaker mm -hmm. here in Los Angeles. Yeah, but before I've really done like all kinds of things. Like after I graduated from uh, college, um, but actually all my career like started from like helping people actually so uh, I majored in industrial design when I was in college mm -hmm. uh, I like designing and stuff like that and then I just like got really interested in jewelries and also like it's very um uh, it, I was really lucky to have like a big uh, jewelry market really adjacent to our college so you know, I got the opportunity to always like to go over there to explore, mm -hmm. and I took like a gem identification class uh, in in university as well. So you know, I, you know, I studied. So like I to learned... create to create jewelry. Uh, so that class is like gem identification. So like we learn like all those like technical stuff, like how do you like do like gem identification, like for jade or you know like oh really. Pearl. And that oh, then, so you can actually tell if it's real or fake. That's that's what it is, right? Uh, yes. So, oh. I'm, so I'm learning from this class. And then, you know, I just, like, go to practice in the market. And, to, you know, to see more things, touch more things, to talk to the jewelers. Mm -hmm. so, and then see how these things are. And then, you know, uh, my aunt, she really trusted me with my, like, uh, taste. And, like, you know, like she, she believes in me. So she always, like, asked me to purchase some jewelries, to mm -hmm. buy jewelries for her. So I just... um. It all started from there. So um, then, you know, she wears my the jewelries that I picked out for her. And then, you know, like all her like co-workers ask her, oh, where did you get your jewelries from? Like, it's really beautiful and all that. And also because I'm in industrial design and I like to design and I can do like the AutoCAD, like, you know, just like do the design thing on, in, on your computer. Mm -hmm. And then they can just actually, the um, they can uh, just like do the whole wax thing and then, you know, make it out. Like the jeweler kind of just does your design, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. So then, you know, just like from there, then gradually I have like a, a customer base like from so like they're like I really like what you're doing. Can you do it for me too? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically yeah. it, right? They're, they're saying that like okay, so like do it for me. <laughs> uh, I would, That's how they I would, would say really like go ch to. check this out. <laughs> yeah, so that's how you started off. And how did you? How did that lead to film? Mm. So so because like um, from like I think jewelry is probably my lifelong career, if possible. You know because I'm oh. always like doing it for friends and all that. Yeah. Because for me, I was um. I had, like, a big dream for, like, you know, I really want to do, like, a cheap price for, like, even, like, higher-end, like, jewelries. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, like, the higher-end jewelries are always really overpriced. Like, at least, you know, like, how many times that? Like. I used to work at Daniel's Jewelry, so I know. Yeah. I used to work at a jewelry right? store, so... at Daniel's Jewelry, and they taught us, like, the quality of the diamond, and I was like, well, why are we selling sort of, like, a mediocre diamond for this much? Like, it shouldn't even be, you shouldn't even sell it for this much, but they does. Like, yeah. it's crazy. They mark it up really high. It's really controlled because, yeah, especially for diamonds, it's very controlled. 
So very. <laughs> yeah. So that's why I really do want to like want my friends or my customers to have like good quality jewelry,、mm -hmm. and then also like not having to pay too much.、Mm -hmm. So that was my intention.、Mm -hmm. And then I really wanted to make it scale. I wanted to make it scale. I wanted to make it international. How am I gonna to make it like that? I'm thinking about like maybe I should go to the United States, you know, to explore more, you know, opportunities and all that. And then that's why I I came here. So all of this was being done where? Uh, in China. In China, okay. Yeah. And then you're just like, well, I'm gonna explore in the United States. Yeah, I wanted to. <laughs> But now, oh, so、like、that's how you got into films. <laughs> you came over here. Yeah, yeah, like that story starts from there.、So、oh, crazy! To, so that's how.、Like, so you came over here, and your intentions was to more familiarize yourself more with jewelries. Uh, yes, to to explore international trade and commerce. Okay. So. Oh yeah. 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 So, <laughs> so after I came here, I studied a little bit of like international trade and commerce,、mm -hmm. and then yeah, I had like a really fun year or two, and then you know, pandemic hit. Oh Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> oh But, no! Wait, what year did you come down here?、Uh, what、um, year? Twenty. I think at the end of twenty eighteen. Damn! So you have like two good years <laughs> two spending good out years. here. Okay,、yes. those are like the best years, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I, I do. It was. I do it was. So,、yeah. Agree, Mr. Producer. <laughs> yeah, twenty eighteen and twenty nineteen was good years. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God! So how did you feel? Damn. So you had family in China, right? Yeah. How did? Damn. How did that feel? That's like um. It was really hard because before it's really easy, you know, to travel from China to here. It's like you know, you just like, go and come back, however you like, whenever you want to. Yeah. But then after the pandemic hits, like it's really impossible. So like really, I haven't been home for like three years now, almost. But it's hard. It's it's really hard. It's hard because they keep having lockdowns, right? Yeah. That's the thing. Like, and you see it. And yeah, and also it's really hard to actually go back, and then you know, come to come back is even harder for me. Oh shit! So it's better so, just to stay here at the moment. Yeah, and you know, it's also like for safety reasons, and also I, I don't know, like I don't want to like go back or maybe infect anyone, you know, to、yeah. to bring the risk to、yeah. other people there. Yeah. Either so that's like um that's really、uh, like a struggle for me because you know like um. If you wanna like, I I'm not able to go home to see my families. I can, but I think the technology is like um really helping me a lot. You know, like with the FaceTime and all that. Yeah. But yeah. still, you know, it's you not the same. It's still not the same. Even it's better than phone calls. Yeah. Yeah. It's better than phone calls, but yeah, you know, sometimes you really want to, you know be in. I'm like, oh, just, like you know, like I just want to jump in from the the screen. Yeah. The you just、side. you really just want to like hug them and just because you miss them.、Yeah. Everyone's safe. In your family? Um yes, uh because they are um like you know the quarantine and in China they they have like very you know like the their lockdowns and、mm -hmm. everything, so luckily they're safe. Okay, good. Wow, how was that? Like when it happened and you were here? Yeah, it was like um, you know I I have to like uh I, at first it was hard for everyone. So everyone has to stay indoor and all that. You know、yeah. people go crazy,、yeah. mm -hmm. and and yeah it's like um and I had like roommates and then. You know, we were like in a, not like really big space when I was in that apartment, so it was like really a struggle. You know, because you were always out, and then suddenly you were just stuck. It was know, like, like a good couple of weeks that you could not leave, like you, only if you needed to get your essentials. But even then, it was hard. Right. Yeah. yeah those times it was really hard. And you have a small space. Oh my gosh. Yeah. How How did you guys deal with that? Hmm. It was pretty hard because um. um So we have to like there were because there there should be like the three of us in the apartment, but then you know like、uh, her sister had to come over here, so you know we had, there were like four of us, and then we just have to like coordinate like, the time and everything and all that、it、was like、um, it was pretty hard. Oh then. no! Yeah. Are you still with the roommates? Oh no! I just moved that.、Uh, I moved out later. And then, oh okay. You know, yeah, like when you were able to. Yeah, when when I was able to, yeah. <laughs> You're like, I need to get out of here. <laughs> oh no, damn. Well, then that pandemic hit. What did you end up doing? Like, how did you?、Mm. So 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 eventually, I just really want to like chase my dream.、Mm -hmm. yeah, because you know, like with everything, like everything and happening around me, everything stopped. Yeah, like I mean, literally everything. You、stopped. see, like lots of like you know, you have loss, and you know, like you know, from friends, you know, you see lots of people are. Like literally dying. Yeah, there was there wasn't just loss of dying. There was loss of death, which was a major thing, major. 
number one thing. But also businesses, relationships, family, like everything. Everything was pretty much gone. Yeah. For, yeah. for a good moment. Yeah, and especially, and that really just like touched me, like touched me a lot because I think, you know, it's, it's like really YOLO, you know, we only live once. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. you really have to go for, you know, what you like, what you want, what you want to do. And I think I just, I uh, I really want to be, um, the reason why I want to be a director is that I, I can express myself, you know, send the message through like a media that's like, um, you know, lots of people can see and probably if lucky for generations. Yeah. Yeah, so that's... Um, it's really- like... It's like, um, um, Harry Potter. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can't think of his Hagrid. Oh. Like, the, the, the actor who played him. Oh. He passed away. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And Judges. what he said was, what they keep repeating in social media is what he said, uh, in the HBO special when they all got together mm. to kind of, like, remember what was happening. He says... That even, like, even though he won't be here anymore, like, at least Hagrid would be here, and he'll be here for his children's 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 generation. And I was just like, that's right. When you do create something so magical, so beautiful, it keeps going on. Yeah. Yeah, it keeps going on. Because for me personally, like, I like in TV shows, I love Lucy. Oh. And that's old. Yeah. That's 50s. Yeah. And I still love it. Mm. Our Wizard of Oz. That's in the 30s. I still love it. It's still a thing. People still dress up like that in Halloween. People still reference, you know, Wizard of Oz. And that was made in, like, 1936, 1938. Like, that's a long time ago. So, you're right. Like, when you do leave something behind, you know, it's beautiful. Yeah, and I think also, like, those values, you know, it just really pass on. And it's like you're receiving all those values, and probably you will like, um, you know, in, like um, just like in your life, you apply those values, like you know, it's just like in you. Yeah, and you do. Yeah. That's yeah, nice. it's crazy. Movies do do that. Yeah, it's like a huge influence, impact that you don't even realize. Huge influence, huge, because there are things that we will see there, and we just like, I don't know, we just end up saying like that's what I want to do or that's that's how we should be or like I love that how it made me feel I want to I'm inspired to do something else there's there's so many things that movies can do yeah yeah and as a director Mm -hmm. that's what you do you're trying to direct the film to get to this vision that you're looking at but when you look at that vision it expands way more because now other people see it and it's going through different like channels of what they're looking at yeah. And that's what you create. You create, like, channels. You create tunnels of different, you know, dreams for everybody. Mm-hmm. I, and I do think that's, like, a lot of, like, responsibility. Because you're, what you're trying to convey, you might influence lots of people. So you have to be very careful. And, you know, uh, I think being a director is almost like you have, you're playing the God's role. Because you have to stand in a really high point. And then you can tell, uh, like, a story not to, you know, like, you're not, like, from anyone's perspective to, you know, closely so that, you know, people can take roles. Like, no one is, like, um, not everyone's, like, everyone's their own hero in their, in their, because we are all, like, yeah. ourselves. But yeah. but then, you know, like, um, people, like, they, um, they really, uh, they, um, how do you say that? Um, so there are like different roles. Like someone, they relate to this. Mm-hmm. They relate to that. People relate to different roles. Mm-hmm. So mostly you just create different real, like real, real roles. Like you know, like like real characters, like, real real, char- like their behavior, yeah. their the what they've gone through. There's a story in each character. Yeah. Yeah. It just don't make like good or bad. It's just like you know, like real life. No, no. Like if like if you think of villains. You know, they'll just think of them as, like, the evil person. Like, they have a story. Yeah, they have a backstory. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they have a story to why they end up being, like, and, and in those stories, we can relate, you know? That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, so when the pandemic hits, that's basically when you start realizing that that's the direction you want to go to. 
Yeah. So and also, I I was just really rearranging and thinking about like the advantages that I have here. You know, we're in Hollywood in Los Angeles. Yeah. So you know, that's like a basically a really huge advantage. You know, so that I just want to explore more. And also, when I was in China, I worked in a film dis a film and TV distribution.、Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you know, like um, I knew how to like distribute a little bit in this. You kind of had the, your feet wet already a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Dip in the yeah, water. Yeah, you had to、bit. dip. <laughs> yeah, but way better than other people. People don't even have dips. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah, that's why、yeah. I I really do like this industry,、mm -hmm. and I really do want to influence like the next generation. So that's why mainly why I just really which is great because there's so many directors before us that influence us and we're here now. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, well, who are your like、uh, favorite directors? Oh, I really like、um, Alfred Hitchcock. <laughs> yeah, so I really like the way he does like a sus like suspense movie、mm -hmm. like that, like the birds. Yeah, the birds. That's my favorite one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that one's really, creepy. Yeah, that's like creepy. Like I scream. Honestly, that's creepy because what if they start attacking? Like one time in high school, a bird. Like I don't know what happened to that bird, but the bird hit the car and it killed itself because it hit itself in this、oh. car.、And、the first thing that popped in my head, I was like looking around, like oh my god, the that movie freaked me out as a kid. But that's what's so good is that it still sticked with me. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's like an、uh, environmental movie as well. You know, just really because it really hits us so that it, we actually think about like what we should do and what we shouldn't. You know, yeah, you know, for nature. Yeah, did he? He did Psycho, right? Yeah, yeah, Psycho. he did Psycho, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah.、Uh, it says、uh, Sigourney Weaver's mom, or whose mom is it? Do you remember who played the the one in the shower? It's someone's mom. I don't. I don't think it's. No, no. It's um, from Halloween. What's her name? Jamie Lee Curtis. Yes, Jamie Lee Curtis. That's、oh. her mom. Oh. Yeah. So the girl, the girl in Halloween,、mm. right now, the one in uh the uh, uh Michael Myers' sister,、mm. like the actress, her mom played the woman in the shower scene. Oh. Who was in Psycho? Who her mom played a horror movie. Now she, as the daughter, is the main character in another major horror movie. Oh wow! Yeah, do you see how funny that is? Like, yeah. yeah. So she kind of followed her mom's footsteps. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Lots of times the kids they always. Like, yeah, they usually fall. Like my daughter, I she finally saw.、Uh, I showed her yesterday that I'm like, look, look at YouTube, and I showed her. She's like, you're on YouTube, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. I'm like, do you want to be on there? She's like, yeah, and I'm like, awesome. <laughs> yeah. So it's pretty cool. That's. I think those are really all good influences. Yeah, yeah. It's good to for me to show her because she needs to know that you know nothing can stop her to do what she wants to do. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. That's what I want to talk about too. You know, I think in to, to never limit yourself. Oh yeah. If you guys. Have not like this girl here is on top of her shit. She will not accept a no, <laughs> and I think that's what I love about you is that you keep you're persistent. You're like, nope, we're gonna、uh, find another solution, find another way. We can move it this forward, or maybe I can give you option A, B, and C. Let's pick one out. I like that about you. I do like that's one of the things I like about、Thank、you. you. Yeah. Because, yeah. Sometimes for projects, if you know, I'm responsible. I just really want to make sure that it gets done. Yeah. So that yeah, because there are, there are more solutions than the problems actually. There is. There is, and a lot of people don't see it that way. That's a good thing that you said. That a lot of people don't see it. Like people just see,、mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm stuck, and it's like not really. There's a lot of different ways we can go about doing it. It's. How much commitment and how much you want to strive going those different directions of solutions? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's so cool. So, what was like your first project that you did in the film? Oh, the first project actually. So after、uh, I'm starting this, and then you know、uh, Daniela,、mm -hmm. uh, so my friend,、uh, also a classmate that we have. Yes, which、uh, if you listen to this,、uh, yeah, you need to be on the show. <laughs> She is going to. We just have to reschedule.、Mm. Yeah, so we did that forty-eight hour. Oh, film pass. I think yeah, that's like uh probably the first one that I produced.、Mm -hmm. So before we, I just like participated in some like short films as PAs or、mm -hmm. you know like a script supervisor and all that. But this was the one that you really like. You were in. Yes, I was like really like really really involved from like development、mm -hmm. until it ends because it's really fast like for eight hour like no sleep fast so we have to do it really no, fast. No, it was really fast. Yeah. Well, what was like the first one you ever did? 
Like the very first, like oh, the very first one. I think oh, it was a short film called Zhang Ren House, uh, and then it's a like a, a like for a classmate as well. Oh, yeah. nice. How was that? How did it, how, I mean? How did you feel about that experience? Uh, it was like a really cool experience for me because you know, like、uh, it was the first time like I got into a set and to see everything and like how it is, and then you know, like there are like all kinds of people there. And then you know we have to do, like to build something like oh so I found out oh so this is how you do it then maybe I can do it too you know like after <laughs> it's so different right yeah when you see it from like in front of like the TV and when you're behind the lens and you're behind the scenes it's night and day yeah it's really different everything is like really creative yeah <laughs> it makes you think about when you watch movies and you're just like oh I know how they did that yeah and then you know you no longer watch the film the way that you did no I I what I do is like okay I'm gonna watch it and I'm not gonna think about any of that because I really want to just like jump in but I get why some actors besides not having they don't want to watch themselves but I guess some actors really don't like to go see you know movies when they're Being filmed, I guess, on themselves. Oh yeah. Yeah, because they probably are at the moment thinking about the behind the scenes of what happened. <laughs> so they're、yeah. like, yeah, I remember what happened there. Like, oh yeah. So they kind of get out of that. <laughs> they're like, I can't get into the movie right now. That's what I like about the screens. Like, you basically lots of things you you can you know you, it's just like within the frame. So other things like the noise around, like outside, you don't really have to record. So you know, like it's really easy to fake <laughs> or you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, you fake it till you make it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because because in theater, it's I think it's really different. You know, everyone's seeing like all of you. you oh yeah, you, you cannot you, make mistakes. No, and if you mistake, you gotta like. Work your way out of that and just be like really quick, you know. Improvise. Yeah. Theater is improvising if you mess up. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. I think that's fun. That's why a lot of actors say like, "I love theater,"、mm-hmm. and I think it's the rush because you know you you have、yeah. one shot. Yeah. <laughs> you the creativity. Yeah, like you have、it. one shot, you can't mess up. <laughs> yeah, I, that's why I really like theater too. But but also like that's why I I want to do screen stuff because also oh if we do this wrong we can do it again and then you know I can frame it like differently. You know, oh like, yeah, well, yeah, that's、uh, the thing you want to you want to see it from different angles. Yeah. Yeah. What's um what's coming up right now? What's your next project? Um. So um. I'm uh recently in development for a few projects. So one is、um, uh, another classmate of mine, like、uh, we're friends, and he wants to do like、um, like a、um, a short film on domestic violence too. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's so, deep. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I really like his topic. So it's um it's something about、uh, Amber Heard and Johnny Depp's、uh, trial. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, because it attracted like lots of attention when it came out. Like the, everyone was watching. It was, was on、watching. TikTok and freaking live everywhere. Oh God. Yeah. 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 So I I like this idea, like making this a film, something like that.、I、is、think. it gonna be similar to that, where the where like the woman is the one that's、um, violent? Oh, so this is gonna be like、uh, something、uh, like to surprise you, like in the、oh, movie. Oh, okay. So you don't really know who is like.、Uh, oh. You know, the- so you guys are gonna play sort of like narcissistic behaviors and stuff like that, toxic, like where you see it but you don't know who like who really is the one who's doing it. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, something like That's that. cool. Yeah. I like things like that. I love movies that you don't know what's gonna happen. Like、yeah. we end up watching,、um, Anthony. Can you remind me that movie we end up watching the title, the、uh, the last movie we saw recently.、Uh, don't worry, darling. Oh yeah, don't worry, darling. That's、oh. a good movie to see because I did not. I I figured it out, but then I was like, but how did they do that? I still was like, wait. Cause like right maybe thirty minutes into the movie, I had already like, oh, I know what this is about. But then after I was like. Wait. So how are they doing this? <laughs> and then right、uh-huh. in the end, it tells you, and I was like, I would have never guessed.、Oh. Like it was a surprise. That's a good movie to watch. Oh, yeah. What's the name of it?、Uh, what was it again? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Don't Worry, Darling. Don't worry, darling. Don't worry, darling. Yeah, worry. yeah. Oh. Yeah, I'm just like I think、uh, the director is Olivia Newton. Like she's the she's the director for that. Yeah, a female director, Lu-、uh, Olivia Wilde. There we go. Cut that out. It's Olivia Wilde that did the directing for that. 
<laughs> yeah. I see it. Though, but... It's really good. The stories, the char- the characters are good. Uh-huh. Yeah. You should watch it. It's a good, good movie. Don't worry, darling. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not... I'm just gonna say, like, I figured it out, but even then, I still was like, what? And then when it would, when it really realized, like, what it was, I did not even expect that. Ooh. Yeah, I love movies like that because it, it's so original. Oh, yeah. Yeah, very original. It doesn't take apart on anything else. I yeah. mean, it kind of does, but it kind of doesn't, which is which what I love. Mm. Yeah. I think a good screenwriter always never wants you to guess. You know, I've never No, no, I think screenwriters in general, they I think there was one good screenwriter. I can't remember his name, but I remember um watching uh like a video about him. He's sort of like, "Yeah, I'm just not the type who likes to go watch movies cuz I already figure out what's going to happen." Like 10 minutes of watching it, I already know what the what the plot is about. Oh. You know, so it's like, okay, like he was talking about a Disney movie called Lucas. Oh. And he says that watching it, he's like, I already know what it's about, watching it 10 minutes into it. Even, like, looking at the uh, at the posters, I already know it's in regards of so-and-so and this, and the ending's going to be reflecting to that. And I was just like, whoa. But he says that the ones that are the best are the ones that just really throws them off. Yeah. And he has no idea. Yeah. And he says those are the best ones because they're unpredictable. Yeah. Yeah. But we're so. But then also for me, like any vampire movie, I don't care <laughs> if I know what's gonna happen, I'll watch it. Yeah. <laughs> the reason why I like, I really like those also. Um, uh, what what was that called? The um, you know, those magical ones. You know the um, the one with the lamp that you. Uh, oh, Aladdin. <laughs> yeah. I know. Aladdin. Yeah. Aladdin. All the wait, Aladdin ones. Wait, you ones. were watching? Didn't you say you watched that? Like there was a movie. Yeah. And it was about that. Yeah. I mean, I saw a little bit. I haven't watched it yet. I actually gonna rent it because I think it. I forgot where. Three thousand years of longing. Yes, yeah. yes, and so I watched a little bit like a like a trailer, mm. and I was like, "Wait, is this what she was talking about?" <laughs> I was like, "Oh shit, this looks interesting." So I saw a little bit of it, and I was like, "Oh, I want to watch it. It's trippy." Yeah. Yeah, I want to watch it. It looks interesting. Yeah. I like it. it. And what's his face? I forgot his name. Uh. He looks, he looks trippy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a good It was one. really, um, um, that one was, like, really unpredictable, I think. So, what kind of, like, um, what kind of struggles do you usually, like, what, what, what puts you down sometimes? Like, what is it that kind of makes you kind of sad or upset or worried or, like, in a depressed mode, basically? Because, like, basically, if I, like, if I'm in China... You know, I know, like, all my families will be there. You know, I'm not, like, uh, scared of getting sick or anything. You know, I guess they can, can, like, people can take good care of me. And then I can just go to the hospital easily. But here, you know, like, um, as an outsider, I don't really know, like, how the healthcare system works and, you know, how that is. Then, you know, like, um, usually, because when, when I was able to travel, I just go back to China and then, you know, just to get my, uh, you know, if I have, like, cavity, I can have my... It's cheaper. Yeah, and also because I know the doctors yeah. and you know everything, I feel very familiar and comfortable with. Yeah. And then you know after like three years, I haven't really taken like really good care of myself really. Here. Here, yeah. Oh shit. You know <laughs> because I wasn't able to go back and then because you know because pandemic and everything, I got really you know stressful and I eat lots of like sweet things and all that. My my entire like basically like my my all my like lots of, I have cavities and then you know I had like uh, the root canal that's a little. A, infected again and then you know i had to go to a like dentist that i don't really know about and here dentists are really expensive too yeah. and it cost me like a really ton of money it's and, expensive yeah yeah and it also sucks. also like yeah i really want to i do want to have like um like a, a doctor who speaks chinese and then you know we can just communicate well how i want him to do this and that and mm-hmm. all this but you know sometimes it's really hard to find and also, yeah, and if you do find them, they're like really expensive. Super expensive. <laughs> You're like, yes. Wait, how much? Yeah, it's like yeah. Uh, so. So actually, you know, their price. If I don't have any insurance, it's like two fifty dollars. You know, for one cavity for a filling, and then you know I have like have some fillings to do, and then you know I'm like. Uh, so living here has been really great when it comes to like fulfilling the dreams that you're doing, yeah. but the custom is so different from where you're at 
that is kind of like that's what's depressing sometimes yeah i think yeah. mostly here you know having a dream is costly not yes. just in terms of like the no. like expenses on housing and and all that and also you have to really take good care of yourself or else you know if something happens i mean yeah but i'm I don't know, but I, I do believe maybe the healthcare system is getting better and, uh, you know, maybe I can just, like, participate. Well, in California, they, it won't start kicking in till 2024. I want to say 2024, if not a little, maybe 2025, where it's universal care in California only. Oh. They passed it. Oh, wow. They did. So now they're working out the legislation, like, they're working out, like, the kinks, the paperwork. And that is approved. So California is considered universal health care. Oh. So that means you can get health care without having to pay anybody. Oh, wow. Anybody. Like, it doesn't matter as long as you're a resident here in California. You won't be able to utilize that. I don't know if it's 2024 or 2025. But I know that is already here. Oh. So if you needed to do, like, a dentist and stuff like that, it's pretty taken care of. I hope so. Because, because you know Well, what? no, they, they did that. They did that. Oh, let's cross your fingers. Yeah, because it, what they wanted to do is to do something similar to Canada, United Kingdom, where it's universal. Oh. You don't have to pay for it. Oh. Yeah. 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 Well, I remember when they, they passed it, I was like, yes, but they're like, it won't be available till like then. I was like, ah, oh, okay. <laughs> so hopefully in a couple of years, we'll, we all have that and we don't have to worry about it. Yes, taxes may go up, but you know what? <laughs> it's a lot cheaper. <laughs> Yeah, like, so far from what I've known, really, actually, I think, because, like, uh, the government's probably giving you, like, really, uh, you don't have to pay a lot for the health care, and maybe you have, like, a really low copay, mm -hmm. but actually that, all that pressure is going to be on the doctors, because and the, the government, they don't really give subsidies, or they don't really pay those other parts of money, so mm -hmm. I'm really worried about, like, you know, like, if I'm just paying this amount, and they used to receive much higher amount, how would they treat you? <laughs> well, the thing is, you have to think about, like, if they're going to do universal care for everybody, that means taxes are going to go up higher. Oh. So that means enough money for the government to pay these physicians. Oh. So I mean, the physicians, right now, whenever you go somewhere and they, they're like, oh, you have Medi-Cal, we don't accept it here. The reason why they don't accept it is because they don't, they don't pay out. Oh. So, but the universal... I'm assuming that the universal care is where it's going to pay out for them. They're oh. going to receive the amount that they should. But in the same oh. time, like smaller practices should deserve every penny that they need. But when it's bigger practices, when it's like corporations, mm -hmm. like they just like to charge you for every little thing for over the top for the price that it shouldn't that it shouldn't be cuz they mark up prices that are made really cheap. Yeah. yeah, and they'll charge you every little thing on there. So at least that's going to be a little bit better. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be better. It's just, it's a balance. So that means if it's free universal uh, care, that means we're, our taxes is going to go up. But that also indicates that uh, practices will get the full benefit for it mm -hmm. instead of getting, like, shit. Because that's why when I worked in the medical field, mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons why a lot of, like, eye doctors don't accept Medi-Cal. Oh. which is a government like insurance oh. they don't accept it because the uh the payback is nothing they get cents oh. like sometimes they'll get paid like 28 cents from God. the government i'm not shitting like i would open up mail and i'll be seeing 28 cents from so and so government oh. yeah yeah this is why you're know, talking about yeah like, yeah it's really bad for it and then you know if the government is not paying and the patient's not paying you know the like oh yeah they're treated differently Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've seen it. I've treated all my patients the same, regardless. Mm -hmm. um, but the, I have seen that. I have seen it where they get treated differently. But hopefully, like, with this new change that they do, mm -hmm. it's not going to be like that. I hope so. It we'll see. Cost. We'll see in a few years. In a few years, yeah. <laughs> what would you want to let people know about, like, what helps you get away from all this negativity? Mm -hmm. Like, whatever negative thing that you feel, how do you get yourself out of that? Mm -hmm. I think it's probably shifting focus. <laughs> you know, like, okay. because, you know, the horrible things, are, like, the miserable things are just there. You know, like, you ha kind of have to not think about it. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, because if you focus on these, because 
uh, what I've learned over the years, like always moving forward.、Mm-hmm. You cannot always just like you know like、uh, soak yourself in the sorrow and in the past, like the things that really makes you feel bad, and you just always soak yourself in it. You're not never gonna come out of it. You just have to go to you know like um like、uh, go to new places, maybe you know like meet new people, and you know like you just have to um uh, uh expose yourself to like to happy things.、Mm-hmm. I think yeah, because like gradually, you you can walk out of it, you know, by you know like um, you, like have more exposures with new things and things that make you happy,、mm-hmm. and you have to focus on like what you want to do like in the future and not just like the past. Of course, it matters a lot to you, but you are moving like forward onward.、Mm-hmm. So I think that's what that's what you do when you're like yeah, that's what I do. You're like okay, I need to do something else. That's yeah, just move forward.、Focus. Yeah, just like do something like that makes me feel happy, and you know I think like、uh, because I think in life it's just what、uh, it's just all about like you know live happily, right?、Mm-hmm. Because、um, you're happy for a day, and then you are happy for another day, you're happy for another day, then you're just like for the rest of your life. <laughs> then because yeah, just try to because、uh, life is always miserable. At least you know fifty percent of your life is like really misery. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. those are, there are other fifty percent that you can make them you know like really. You're you're delighted happy. Yeah. So you're saying like you know you have the choice to do it and you should like、yeah. know that you can go this direction. Yeah. You can choose to be happy. Yeah. You don't have to be like you know a character in Les Misérables. <laughs> <Something like. laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's actually really good advice. Like your shift, you shift your direction, get away from that, and do something that makes you happy,、yeah. which is really great. Ah.、Yeah. Oh. Well, let everyone know、mm-hmm. where they can find you. Oh,、uh, I think you can find me、um, on Instagram、uh, at、uh, Q I A N forty eight ninety eight. Yeah, yeah. And then, is there anything else that they can check you out? Just your Instagram. Uh, yeah. So far, I'm just doing that、awesome. for social media. Okay, amazing. Well, it was really. I'm so thankful you're here. Honestly, me too. Because yeah, really like、bad. this helps everybody. I'm really、I、happy. Yeah, it, it does. <laughs> Anybody who listens, you know, this is a moment of just like. You know, wherever, where, whatever plateau that you're at, you know, we're not alone. You know, in the end, we're not alone. We're we're doing this, like, and it should be a norm for us to express how we feel,、mm-hmm. or especially those really dark moments. You know,、yeah. those should be shared,、uh, and they're not shared. You know, because when you sit down and I ask you, "How's your day going?" and what do you end up telling me? Everything's awesome, <laughs> and it's like, no, really, how is your day? That should be a normal thing to ask. Like, are you really okay? Yeah, thank you so much for being here. Sure, thank you so much for inviting me. <laughs> I sincerely hope you enjoyed that conversation as much as I did. Thank you so much for joining us and listening. Don't forget to like, comment, leave a review, follow us on socials, and subscribe because you won't want to miss the magic.